It's Tuesday with Pastor Pappy. Today, we have something so exciting to talk about. It may change your life forever. We're going to learn about one of God's special gifts for Christians. Now, we already know that Jesus gave his life to forgive our sins so that we can become Christians. Then God the Father sent another gift to help us live our life for him. And that gift is the Holy Spirit. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we call it the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We can know we are baptized in the Holy Spirit because we speak in tongues, a language that we haven't learned that God allows us to speak. Our faith fact says, we believe that when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we will speak with tongues. You can see the image that represents today's faith fact is fire. Now we'll discover why that represents being baptized in the Holy Spirit a little later. Today, we will study Bible verses that will help us to understand why we believe that when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we will speak in tongues. To get started, let's check in with Hank and Jeremy. everyone, my name is Jeremy and today we're learning about how people can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hank sent me this fire extinguisher and told me to meet him here, but... Hello, Jeremy! I see you brought what I gave you. Yes, but uh, why would we need a fire extinguisher? Shh. Have I ever steered you wrong? Yes, all the time! Don't be ridiculous! What about the time when... Or that time when we went to the... Actually, I think you might be right. Oh, you know I'm right. So whatever it is you're planning, I think you should tell me. Fair enough. That does seem like the safest option for everyone involved. So what are you up to? So I wanted to talk to you about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism? Really? I would love to talk about the... I'm scared! <laughs> Why would you be scared? My brother Frank told me about it. He told me that water baptism was easy compared to this. He said that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is like baptism in fire. And that's why you brought the fire extinguisher. Yes, I'm covered in fur. I don't know if I'm gonna survive. Listen, Frank was right when he said that, but it isn't a physical fire. It's a spiritual fire. Do I need a spiritual fire extinguisher? <laughs> no, a few things happened when Jesus' followers were first baptized in the Holy Spirit. First, there was a sound like a rushing wind. Then something that looked like flames came and rested on their heads. I knew it! Frank was right! There is fire! I'm gonna burn! No, you're not going to burn. Let me make it simple for you. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is a gift from God. I like gifts. And I like God. God's gifts are the best, but it's a gift every Christian can have. And there's nothing we can do to earn it. All you can do is ask for it and receive it. Like it's my birthday or Christmas. That's right. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, God helps you speak using words that you never learned. Speaking in that language from God is called speaking in tongues. So there's no hurricane winds and nobody gets burned. Nobody gets hurt. The gift of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is a good gift that God wants to give everyone. What's with the whole speaking in other languages thing? It's called speaking in tongues. Sounds weird. I'm in. It's actually not weird. Speaking in tongues is the first physical proof that the Holy Spirit has empowered us. This baptism of the Holy Spirit thing must be pretty important. Oh, it's super important. In fact, the power of the Holy Spirit helps you to do all that God has planned for you. Wow, thanks Jeremy. You made it seem way less scary than Frank did and a lot less painful. It sounds like Frank may be really confused. Oh, when it comes to Frank, confused is putting it lightly. I'll go talk to him right now. Bye. Uh, wait, what am I supposed to do with this? Hank, like many people, did not have all the facts right about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. A fire extinguisher, really? It's like trying to bake a cake 
without an oven or build a house without any tools. It would be very frustrating and it might seem impossible. Jesus left his disciples with what seemed like an impossible task. He wanted that small group of people from the small country of Israel to speak his message to the entire world. It must have felt like an impossible thing to do, but Jesus had a plan to help them. The baptism in the Holy Spirit was promised to Jesus' followers. Jesus presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Jesus told the disciples to wait for the gift of God that, that he had promised to send. <laughs> Think about a time that you had to wait for a gift, like maybe on your birthday or Christmas. It can be so hard waiting. Remember, the disciples had seen Jesus after he was raised from the dead. They knew Jesus is God, and they wanted everyone to know the good news about what Jesus had done. That must have made it really hard for them to obey Jesus and just wait, rather than hurrying out and telling everybody they know everything they know about Jesus. Jesus wanted people to know the good news about salvation, but he knew it was important for the disciples to first have everything they need. Jesus promised the baptism in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit would give the disciples everything they need to tell people about Jesus. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit, it wasn't just for those disciples, it's for everyone. You can receive this incredible gift from God if you ask for it and wait for God to give it to you. The Holy Spirit first came on the day of Pentecost. The disciples waited for days after Jesus went back to heaven. They spent time praying and worshiping God in the upper room of a house. And they, they probably didn't know what it would be like when God would send the Holy Spirit. Then the Feast of Pentecost came and Jews from all over the world were gathered in Jerusalem for this special celebration. Listen to what happened next. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Wow! Jesus kept his promise. He sent the Holy Spirit to help the disciples. The believers who were gathered there, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, now you might be wondering, well, how do they know that they were baptized in the Holy Spirit? Well, we know they were baptized in the Holy Spirit because they spoke in a language from God that they'd never learned. It's called speaking in tongues. That was something the disciples could never have done on their own. It proved that they had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I remember when I experienced the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I was only 16 years old. There wasn't a sound of a rushing wind or what looked like flames of fire. But I know that I experienced the baptism in the Holy Spirit because God allowed me to speak in a new language that I had never learned. And with this new language, I can pray and talk privately to God to strengthen my faith. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit will strengthen your faith too. That's why we believe that when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we will speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit gives us power to live and work for God. Remember? Why the disciples needed the Holy Spirit? They had this big, scary, impossible task ahead of them to help the whole world to know about Jesus. But the same leaders who wanted Jesus to die, they wouldn't be happy with disciples who were spreading Jesus' message. Those leaders, they killed Jesus. So it made sense that his disciples were kind of scared. There was one disciple who was scared really bad. And when Jesus was arrested, he, he was so afraid of being arrested himself that he lied 
three times telling people he didn't even know Jesus. His name was Peter. And after Peter was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he was completely changed. He stood in front of a big crowd and he preached the word of God with boldness. He said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself. Peter's life was forever changed on the day of Pentecost. He led 3,000 people to become Christians in one day. The Holy Spirit gave him boldness. The church grew quickly because of the power of the Holy Spirit. It helped the disciples to do difficult things that Jesus told them they could do. When we experience the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we're filled with power as well. And that's exactly what Jesus promised before he went back into heaven. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit fills us with power so that we can live for God and go do his work. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit gives us boldness and power to love God more and power to show his love to others. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving the Holy Spirit to be our helper. Thank you for offering the power of the Holy Spirit to help us fulfill the mission of Jesus to go into all the world and preach the good news. Jesus, fill me with overflowing power from your Holy Spirit. Today I pray in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you. See you next Tuesday.